Hello and welcome to program 59 in this series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. As always, if you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com and uh, I'll let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So program 59 uh, builds on some of the, uh, the stuff that I did in tutorial 98, and that was looking for constrictions in Bollinger Bands, where the thickness or the height between the two lines got to a minimum within a user-defined number of bars. And the idea behind it was when the lines get, to get together, it means that the volatility has decreased. And then uh, in some cases, after a decrease in volatility, there's going to be an increase in volatility and uh, you could get some price moves. So uh, what I've done in 59 is created actually an indicator and a paint bar. And uh, what they do, and let me just uh, open up a specific one here we've got the pound dollar so like tutorial 98 we still get an indication when the bands have constricted to a point which is the minimum in a user defined number of bars and the default for that is uh, 120 so you can see here we have a constriction and then we have a significant price move occurring after that so what this indicator does it plots the Bollinger Bands and the average if you have a user uh, defined input set to true. It also plots the uh, Keltner channel. And uh, when we get a constriction like this, we also get an alert. Also, when we cross above the upper Bollinger crosses above the Keltner channel or the lower Bollinger crosses below the Keltner channel, we also get alerts. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the inputs for this program. So you could see we've got three programs applied here at the moment. It's going to look at the inputs and uh, firstly you can set the Bollinger price and the Keltner price, also the Bollinger length and the Keltner length, the number of ATRs which is used in the uh, Keltner calculation, the number of devs up and number of devs down which is used in the Bollinger band calculation. Now numbars, this is the number of bars uh, over which we calculate to find if we've got to the point where the height, the difference between the high and the low Bollinger Bands has got to its minimum in that number of bars. So that's 120 by default. And then the colors. Now you probably notice that uh, differently from tutorial 98, we've got a variation in colors and we're actually using the gradient feature of trade station here and the above color we're going between red and white so you'll see that as the lines get closer to the lower Bollinger Band the line in this case becomes more white as it gets further away it becomes more red so it gives you a sort of visual cue as to how far the lines are away similarly for the below we've got below cut two below colors and then we've got the squeeze color itself so that is when we get the uh, minimum within the numbars then we, we change the color of the plot to the squeeze color, which in this case is magenta. Then not only uh, as the lines get closer do, does the color change, but we also change the thickness of the line. And you'll see that we've got um, above width and below width. That is the maximum width that the line will become as they become closer and closer and closer. And then finally, well, last but uh, not least, the uh, almost last max width this is the width when we get the uh, the squeeze when we get the the uh, minimum height within the numbars number of bars and then finally show average that just uh, if that's set to true then we just show the average about which the bollinger bands are calculated okay so that is the indicator also going to show you this being used with the scanner in a moment but uh, first of all I just want to introduce the the paint bar so let's just go back and well we can actually just stay I think on the same well let's just have a look at this particular one here so uh, another chart you can see a constriction here and then a fairly significant price move so let's just go back to the daily and you'll notice that uh, the paint bar study is coloring the bars a specific color uh, here and a different color here and then sometimes it's not really coloring the bars at all um, so th the way that this works is using very similar information to the indicator but what happens is if the Bollinger Band is above the 
Keltner channel as it is for the whole of this period here and the slope of the MACD is positive then we color the bars green. If the Keltner channel is uh, below the Bollinger Band and the MACD is sloping downwards then you can see we're coloring the, the bars red and uh, if we have a squeeze condition you'll see that the bars are colored yellow and we the, the, uh, the colors are user defined and we'll look at the inputs at the moment. If the uh, Bollinger Bands are inside the Keltner channel then we don't color them. You can see here these are bars just the regular color. So let's just have a look at the inputs and a lot of these inputs are very similar to the indicator uh, until we get down to the above color and below color and uh, you can see that that's uh, when we're coloring the bars green when the uh, the MACD is sloping upwards and the Bollinger is above the Keltner and similarly for the below color and then the squeeze color is yellow in other words that corresponds to the uh, when the indicator plots a magenta color and then we finally got some inputs for the MACD that we're calculating okay so that is the uh, the indicator and the paint bar study what I want to do now is just very briefly just show you how you could use this within a scanner so I've already got this applied to a scan and uh, what I'm going to do is just pick um, it's going to double click on that and in fact this was a previous version of the program so what I'm going to do is just remove this altogether and we'll just start from scratch so um, gonna delete the scan okay so we're gonna click a new scan and uh, gonna call it program 59 and it's asking which symbols are going to be in our universe so I'm just gonna say let's just say all NYSE and okay and then we're not going to exclude any symbols, so we're just going to say next. Then we've got the criteria. Now, what we want to do is use our indicator, and this is going to show us a list of indicators. We're going to choose the program 59, like so. And we need to do a couple of things here just to get it ready for the scan. Uh, one of the important things is to make sure that we have some additional data. It's going to load uh, 200 bars here just to be on the safe side. We can use the uh, the daily interval depending on which interval you're interested in and I think the rest of it we can leave pretty much as we like. And what we're going to do here is going to actually be looking for the alert and we're going to be just displaying that in this particular case. So i um, going to finish, created our scan, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say run the scan and this is going to go through all of those symbols and see if any of them have conditions where either there has been a narrowing of the Bollinger Bands or the Bollinger Band has moved outside of the Keltner channel. Okay the scan has concluded and now we can see in several cases where we have the true condition and uh, we have this linked with another chart so if we were to arrange all and uh, just have a look you'll see that let's just check which uh, which chart we're looking at. This is five minutes. Just need to make that into a daily, like so. And then you'll see we've got the uh, those crosses having occurred, uh, or rather the narrowing in this particular case having occurred very recently. The other thing we could do here is rather than uh, looking at all the conditions, we could just set it just to only show the true ones. So to do that, we would go uh, back to the program and instead of display we would want to change that to true and uh, again we would run the scan and uh, in this case we're just going to see a list of all those symbols for which there has been an alert and remember again with the uh, scanner this is actually uh, after the market but if the market were running it does the analysis on the the previous closed bar Okay, so the scan has completed and you can see now that we've just got a list of the symbols where there has been an alert condition. Okay, so hopefully you might uh, find this program uh, useful. Thank you.